Okay, so we are doing the linear transformations. You can do it on the computer or you can do it on here whenever you print it. So graphing y equals 2x. So when we graph, we always graph y equals mx plus b. So m is your slope, b is your y-intercept. You graph the b first, which is your y-intercept. On here, we don't have a plus b. So that means that our b is 0. So where it crosses the y-axis is at 0. So we'll plot a point at 0. And then our slope is 2. But whenever we do a slope, we need a rise over a run. So that'd be 2 over 1. So we're going to go up 1, 2 over 1. Up 1, 2 over 1. It's hard to see these because of how it's, um, how the printer did. So just kind of do your best. So I'm going to go ahead and graph this. Oh, there we go. And extend it all the way throughout the whole graph. And this one is A. And I'm color coding them. So the next one is y equals x. So again, we don't have a plus b, so b equals 0. And then m is a 1. So you have to have a rise over run, so 1 over 1. So again, we plot our y-intercept. 0, and then up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. This is called your parent function, y equals x or f of x equals x. It has a slope of 1 and a y-intercept of 0. It's our linear parent function. Okay, line C. Y equals 1 over 2X. We don't have a Y-intercept. It doesn't have plus anything. So B equals zero again. And so our slope is rise over run, our M, one over two. So we're going to plot the zero, zero and go up one over two. Up one over two. And then D, Y equals 4X. We have B equals 0. I want to do a different color. B equals 0. And our slope equals 4, but we have to have a rise of a run, so 4 over 1. So 0, 0 is where we'll start, and we'll go up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1. Up one, two, three, four, over one. No, that is not perfect. Um, 
and that is the And my line kind of got messed up, but I did it in pen. I should have done it in pencil first. Okay, so what do you notice about these graphs? That line? Uh huh. All of the graphs go through the origin. And what else? What do you notice about the line? Goes through the origin, but what else do they have in common about the slope? What kind of slope is that? Think about slope, dude. Mm -mm, it's increasing. Positive slopes. All of the slopes are positive. So they all rise from left to right. How does changing the slope affect the graph? So if you look at the graph, we have 2x, 1x, 1 half, and 4. That's the only thing we changed. So how did that affect the graph? What was changed in each one of these lines? The slope. What does slope affect? What does slope describe? What? Yep. So what's changing? How does changing the slope affect the graph? Changing the slope. Slope. Affects. The steepness of the line. And then the last question here, lift the graphs in order from most steep to least steep. Which one is most steep? Huh? D? D, which had the slope of 4. And then what? I'm going to put M equal 4. Then what was the next one? Then it'd have to be A. And A, the slope was 2. And then what was the next one? It's B. And M equals 1. And then our last one was C, which M equals 1 over 2. So the steepness, the greater the number, the steeper the line. The closer it is to zero, the flatter it is. So we have steep and we have flat lines. So C is flat compared to D. All right, let's do part B. It says graph the following equations in four different colors. Hmm? Yeah, yeah, you can use the same colors. 
So I'll do the first one. Y equals 3x. What is our y-intercept? Zero. So again, it's going to go through the origin. And our slope is 3 over 1. That means we need to rise 1, 2, 3, and run 1. Rise one, two, three over one. Okay, let's do negative 3x. So again on that one we have a y-intercept of 0. And the slope this time is negative 3 over 1. So that means we're going to start at the origin again. But this time instead of rising 3 and running 1, we are falling 3 and running 1. One, two, three, over one. Ball, one, two, three, over one. And we can go the other way. Rise, one, two, three, left one. What do you notice about the graph of A compared to B? They have the same steepness, 3, but the only thing that's changed is negative. What happens whenever you change it to a negative slope? They've got a slope, dude. Negative slope, he is going downhill. Positive slope, he's going uphill. So a positive slope, it's rising from left to right. Negative slope is it's falling. He's falling from left to right. Okay, let's do the next one. Uh, y equals x. This is, again, our linear parent function where our y-intercept is 0 and our slope is 1 over 1. Because it's there's no uh, coefficient, so that automatically means it's a one. So start at the origin, rise over run, one over one, one over one, one over one, one over one, one over one. Okay, and then y equals negative x. So we have, again, a y-intercept is 0, but a slope this time is negative 1 over 1. You only make one of, you only make the top number negative. Don't put it on the bottom also because then negative over negative actually makes it positive. So we'll go from the origin down 1 over 1. Down one over one, down one over one, down one over one. That is D. Make sure to label it. 
Okay, what do you notice happens if your slope is negative? So see how A and B are the exact same slope except one's negative? So they have the same steepness. C and D have the exact same steepness. They are one's negative and one's positive. So what does it do whenever you flip it to a negative? So when the slope is negative, the line reflects over the y-axis. Remember the word reflect? That means to flip across the y-axis. And this is your y-axis. See how you have it here and it's flipped over? When the slope is negative, the line reflects or flips across the y-axis. Hey, everybody good there? Okay. Graph the following equations in four different colors. Okay, y equals 2x. What is our y-intercept? It's 0 on that one. And our slope is 2 over 1. So the y-intercept is at zero, and then we rise to run one. Rise to run one. Okay, then the next one is y equals 2x plus 6. So the y-intercept here is 6. So that means I'm going to plot my y-intercept at 6. Then I'm going to do rise over run. Our slope is 2. So I'm going to go up 2 over 1. Up 2 over 1. I usually do at least 3 points and make sure those three points are in line. If they have the same slope, which these do, what do you notice about these two lines so far? Parallel, yay, parallel. And the next one, y equals 2x minus 3. So b equals negative 3. m equals 2 over 1. And then rise to run 1. So if it's the same slope, it should be parallel also. So make sure when you draw this, it does look parallel. You're not going to intersect at all. The lines do not intersect when they're parallel. So 
So what do you know? Oh, the next one. Sorry, I got ahead of myself. B equals negative 5 on the next one. Our M is still the same, 2 over 1. So this time go down to negative 5. Go up 2 over 1. Up 2 over 1. So make sure this looks parallel, even when it's hard to graph. So what do we notice about the graphs? We already said it. The lines are, yep. Lines are parallel to each other. That's spell parallel, right? Yeah, I did. Gotta make sure. So how does changing the y, y intercept, see how these y intercepts were changed? It doesn't affect the steepness or the slope, but what does it affect? How is the line? The last one, this one was a reflection. This one was the steepness. Now what is this? What's happening to the line? Do it. What's one of those um, those words that if you're moving something up, down, side to side, if you move it horizontally, you move it vertically, it's called translation. Remember that? So the y-intercept translates the line up and down on the y-axis. Changing the y-intercept translates a lot up and down the y-axis. Okay, we are going to describe the transformations from the graph f of x to g of x now. Okay, all of these f of x's, these two anyway, these are called the linear parent function. So we are first going to describe the change on the equation, and then we'll describe how that changes the graph. So if we look at this and look at this one, what was changed? This slope is 1, this slope is 2. So how do they compare? So if it's 1 compared to 2, like this one, what happens to the graph? It gets steeper. Mm -hmm. So g of x is steeper. because of that too. And then how does the y-intercept affect it? What's the other change? Now that we know it's steeper, what else was changed? This y-intercept is zero and this one's negative three. Changing the y-intercept translates a lot up and down the y-axis. So is this going to be translate up or down? 
down how many spots? It's so going from zero, because that's plus zero, to a minus three. And translated, three units down. So get out your calculator and let's look at how this looks on the calculator. If you don't have a calculator, go get one or pull it up on your computer. So let's go to y equals and let's plot both of these. So y equals x and y1. And then the other one is 2x minus 3. So hit graph. So there's our parent function. goes directly through the origin, 1, 1. Okay, so now look at it. See how it's steeper? It climbs at a faster rate. And then the y-intercept was at zero. Now it's at negative three. So that follows what we said. So we looked at the steepness. The blue line is the first one. So see how this one is blue? It gives a little color coding of blue, and this one gives a color coding of red. That's how we know that the first one is the y equals x. And then the second one is the y equals 2x minus 3. So g of x, the red one, is steeper, and it's translated three units down. Okay, let's look at the next one. f of x equals x, and f of x equals negative x plus 2. So on this one, what do we notice about the slopes? Slope is the number in front of the x, so that'd be like 1 and negative 1. What happens whenever you have a positive and then it changes to a negative? When the slope is negative, the line reflects or flips across the y-axis. So g of x is flipped across the y-axis. And then how does the y-intercept change it? it it's at zero, and now the new one says plus two. So how is that going to affect the graph? From a zero to a plus two. And it's translated. Is it up or down if it's plus two? Up. Two units up. Let's graph these to look at them. So y equals x and then y equals negative. Negative x. Plus two. So y equals x is the blue one, and then negative x plus two. So it's flipped across the y-axis, and then it's also moved up. It has the exact same steepness, but it is shifted two units up. Okay, let's do the next one. f of x equals 2x plus 2, and g of x equals 5x minus 3. So how do their slopes compare? We have 2 and we have 5.
Is it going to be flatter or steeper? Y'all help me out. Yeah. Yeah, it's steeper. And then going a y-intercept of positive 2 to a minus 3. That tells us our translation. How far is it going to be translated if it is at 2 and now it's at negative 3? How far will that be on a translation? So you think of, let's see, positive 2, 1, 2, down to negative 3. How far was it translated? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units down. Okay, the last one. f of x equals x minus 4. g of x equals negative 1 over 2x plus 2. So look at the slope first. x, which would just be a 1, compared to a negative 1 over 2. So it has a negative. So what does that do? What's the first thing that the slope going from a positive to a negative does? Going from a positive to a negative is going to flip it. And what else does the slope do? Going from a 1 to a 1 half. It's going to be steeper or flatter. Yeah, the closer the slope is to 0, the flatter it is. So g of x is flipped across the y-axis and flatter. And translated, because that's what our y-intercept does, negative 4 to a positive 2. So if we look at the y-axis, it is at negative 4, goes up to a positive 2. So how much did it translate? Yep. Six units. Because it went from a negative four to a two, so up. Okay, so we are done with our notes. We are going to put this in our journal. If you did it on the computer, it could just stay on the computer. Um, we'll do more with it whenever we do our review.